and welcome back to my channel. I bought a bunch of them. Spotlight had a sale for four for twenty dollars this week, and so I picked up a bunch of patterns. And I'm just gonna go through those and some of the ones I've thrifted and been gifted, and um, some of the magazines that I have that also have patterns in them. So, firstly, first up, you'll have seen this pattern last week. It's the Butterick five nine six three, and it's just a bunch of like pajamas and nightgowns and like a robe and a and a, ro a shorter robe that curly closes I can't words um <laughs> a robe and a shorter robe and at the moment I'm working on the B which is this long uh robe for a good friend of mine so you can basically make a whole um pajama ensemble and I really like this pattern. It's a little bit uh more of an older style but I really like the elegance of the robe so Hopefully that one comes out nice. I'm currently making the mock-up for that. Uh, at the same time as getting that one, I picked up the fabric that I'm going to make it out of. So it's a little bit wrinkly because I've just pre-washed it, but it's just this kind of plum colored fabric. It's a rayon, printed rayon from uh, Spotlight, and it's just got a bunch of geese in multi-directions, so I don't have to worry about some geese being upside down. Uh, makes it really easy to sew and hopefully it comes out as a really elegant looking robe. I still have to pick up some ribbon for one of the ties, but other than that, um, once the mock-up's done, I'm ready to go. Then I also picked up this McCall's pattern, the M7503. I really loved the cut of this dress. It's quite a classic dress and it's part of the Nicole Miller pattern line they have, I suppose. The thing that's attractive about this pattern is that it has separate cup sizes for um, all the pattern pieces. So it's in size ranges 14 to 22. And I, the reason I picked up the bigger size packet is I'm in this weird point where my top half is the bottom section of pattern sizes. So it's uh, so like six to 12 kind of thing or six to 14. But my bottom section is the larger part of patterns. And even though this skirt is not really fitted to the bottom, um, just based on the measurements at the back and the measurements at the hip line, I actually thought the bigger pattern would be better. So it's got a, where am I looking? With all the finished garment measurements and all the ease, it's at 61 and a half inches. And I really like that kind of fuller skirt look. So I think I'll see how it goes starting with a bigger base and adjusting down rather than uh, the Vogue pattern that I did where the bottom was a little bit tight but the top fitted nicely so I went with the 14 in the Vogue. Um, that might be different from a call, maybe that's a mistake, I don't know. I do still have to pick this up in a smaller pattern size as well because when I, after I picked this up a friend of mine, after I put in the purchase, sorry, a friend of mine contacted me and said that she would love me to make a dress for her. I'm perfectly happy to do that. We went shopping and um, she picked this pattern out as the one that she'd like for her dress, but I'd already ordered this packet and I didn't realize that I'd remember, I didn't remember that I'd ordered it in a bigger size and she's much smaller than I am. So I'm gonna pick this up in a smaller size and make a mock-up of the smallest size in that pattern and see how that fits her and go from there. But yeah, a really nice pattern, especially for like a basic work dress. So that's that pattern. Then I picked up a couple of tops with the intention of using some of my scraps or uh, trying not to buy as much fabric <laughs> uh, that dresses dresses seem to absorb a lot so I wanted to try and get some tops that I can make a couple of smaller easier quick projects from and I picked up this McCall's M7752 in again the larger pattern packet if it does become a bit of a hassle I guess I know that I don't need to do this anymore and I should stick with the smaller one and just adjust down from there but it's a little bit of a test. I really liked um, the, the one that's on the model and also this kind of style. Yeah, so that's that one. Next, I picked up the McCall's 7084, which is a really fun dress. I especially like this view C. Um, I think that would be really cool to make just maybe even a casual and a work version of. Um, I just, it just really captured me. I love the kind of uh, fit and flare style of these kind of dresses as you'll probably have noticed because most of my dress patterns are fit and flare um, And there's a couple of different variations with a waist tie and yeah, just a really cute um, Pattern and I was really excited to get into that one 
again to fit with the top style of things I picked up the M7783 which is just another uh, packet with a bunch of different top variations that are really cute I think most of these I'll probably make uh, the peplum bottoms just because I don't really like having my mood drift out a bunch um, maybe in a few depends you know uh, non bloated day maybe <laughs> that's that one next I have this lovely lovely dress I absolutely love this look um, and had the fullness of the skirt and just the wrap around front and just everything about it's really cute and I want to try and make it it's the M7081 um, and it's got a bunch of variations mostly just sleeve variations and putting a border on the bottom so the standard dress uh, build is still in there and that's really the one I was looking for um, I do like the one with sleeves but I'm not sure I've not had much luck getting sleeves to look good I think I've got to do some fitting around my bicep and like back and armhole stuff like it always seems to gape or something along those lines so that if I feel like doing some pattern testing slash mock-ups for this I might do the sleeved version but yeah just a nice little cute dress I thought it was really interesting Next up, I picked up this McCall 6953 uh, and I really, really liked the asymmetrical skirt line of this and that it's just an, has also just the very, very basic uh, kind of work appropriate dress as well, um, which would be lovely to make out of like a cotton sateen or something along those lines. Um, the variations come with just the bottom, there's no sleeve variation and it's just making it asymmetrical in the front, so like longer in the front, sorry or shorter in the front or the same level but longer. I really like the idea of the pleats in the front being what gives it volume where the skirt, it's the way that you cut the circle skirt or I don't even know if it's a circle skirt but the bottom style cut of the skirt is what gives it its volume whereas this one is pleats and where this one is um, just the amount of fabric that you have, the different panels will give you the volume. So I'm interested to see how those variations make different looking skirts and which one I prefer. Next in the spotlight haul, I picked up the McCall 7781, this really cute top uh, with the cut out shoulders and I just thought all of these looked so adorable, I'd love to make a few and they're still nice and girly and feminine whilst still being work appropriate, which is something I like, I like to, I like to get patterns I can make the more formal work version of, well maybe not formal formal in this case, but you know, a formal er version and then also a really nice playful casual version as well. And the variations are all in the sleeves. The basic bodice stays the same, which I'm interested to see as well what that would look like without sleeves. Um, that might be interesting to see that kind of top. So I thought that would be a really versatile pattern. I can use it for a bunch of things. Now this pattern I picked up, it's not the most interesting dress, I will admit, considering all the <laughs> lovely dresses I've already got. But what attracted me to this is the Palmer and Pletch tissue fitting method that is listed in this pattern. So it teaches you how to uh, do the Palmer and Pletch method, which I've got a book for and um, a base pattern from Vogue for, but I thought I'd pick this and just see if it kind of sheds some more light on how to do that. I still haven't made up my mind if I want to use this as a way to fit my tissue patterns, just because I like preserving the pattern for use on different sizes, in saying that I've never actually had to make a different size of any of the patterns I have, but you know, once I get a little bit better, maybe I'll be able to make some for my family and friends and they aren't all the same size as me. So I like to not cut into my tissue, which makes the Palmer and Pletch tissue fitting method a little bit difficult because it's mostly handling the tissue a lot and I'm worried it's gonna get damaged. But I did pick up this M7352 just for that purpose to try and use that tissue fitting method to see if I can make a dress that fits really nicely. So that's that one. And that uh, completes all the patterns from Spotlight. As I said, it was four for 20, so I got these for eight of these for um, $40, and then I picked this one up separately um, on a different day. So this is online, and this is in physically in store when I picked up the fabric. Another um, pattern I got from Spotlight, but I got it as a gift from a friend of mine from work. Shout out to Serena, you're the best. <laughs> um, she got me this Simplicity 8297 pattern and I really, really loved um, 
view A of this, but then like looking at it, I'd probably end up making all of them if I'm honest. I really love all of these. Again, for work, um, for a more formal day at work probably, um, depending on the fabric you make, obviously. It's a really lovely button up top, a little bit more feminine than the button up shirt I made more recently, a couple of videos back, which I'll link down below as well. So that's that one. I'm really excited to get into this, especially with a couple of the smaller chunks of fabric that I have. So next, I'm gonna go through a bunch of patterns that I thrifted, um, or that I got gifted to me, or that I found online, so not from just your standard store. Uh, so first up is this Butterick Classics Fast and Easy pattern for uh, skirts. It's a 6419, and I believe I have no idea if this is still in print or not. It's a very basic um, gathered skirt. Oh, I think one has a zip. Two of the styles pull on, which I would assume are the um, gathered variations, and then two of them are zippers. And yeah, I've had this one. This was gifted to me by um, Danny, my pretty much sister-in-law, um, and she got this while she was over at New Zealand and she saw it in a thrift store, and I absolutely love it. I want to try and make some of these. I just haven't gotten around to bottoms yet. I'm not sure what it is about bottoms that's freaking me out. Like, I made my first pair of pants recently, but honestly, they just intimidate me, so um, not skirts so much. I'll probably get to making, like, view A or D. They look really stylish, and I'd love to make them for work. That'd be good. I just have to find the right fabric, which I'm having trouble doing for bottoms. Next is this Simplicity 6569, and I just love this lady. Like, she looks so stylish. I will not look like that when I make this pattern, but, you know, a girl can dream. Um, I love the vest style and the collar, especially of the vest, which you can't even see in this diagram. Um, I haven't opened this to see if all the um, tissue is in there, but just from a quick look, it's all still folded as it would be from the factory. So I'm assuming that everything is still in there. Um, hopefully the instructions are too. <laughs> but I'd love to make the jacket like, oh, it's so cute with the, the huge collar and buttons. Oh, I'm just in love with it. I love that pattern. Next I picked up, you know those patterns that you're like, man, this would be awesome if I made this. It's a massive stretch, but I'd love to make it. Yeah, that's one of these. So I've picked up, I think actually, I'm not sure if I picked this up or if Danny again got this, but I think we got it from a um, Vinnie's store in Caboolture. Uh, it looks like all the pattern pieces are still there. I've had a little peek inside. Um, however, it requires knit fabric and I don't know if you guys know, but knit fabric terrifies me, like scares the shit out of me because I tried to do it once and it just, I mean, if you want to see the atrocity, it's on my Instagram, it's a horrible orange dress, which still gives me nightmares to this day. But I would love to get like a, some basic white leotards um, just for like, I like under some jeans, um, I think they're really cool, you wouldn't have to worry about it riding up. But I'll get there one day when I don't feel like knits might kill me. Next I got this McCall's 2184 and I picked this up solely for this delightful little top. Um, whether it actually suit me, who knows, but you know, a girl can dream. Um, and it is factory folded. I got it from online. I think I paid $3 for it. Whether I actually end up making it anytime soon or not, who knows? But you know, it's there for a rainy day. Who knows? If I get lose inspiration, maybe I'll just pick up some of my fabric scraps and see if I can chuck this top together. I'm sure it wouldn't take too long. And um, that's that one. Another one I got thrift shopping with Danny again is this Make It Easy Mix and Match Pattern Wardrobe and Sewing Guide. And I feel like this is part of a set like there's 14 of these and you can get each one and i absolutely love these paper bag, paper bag waist pants and the shorts variation as well the reason i haven't made anything from it yet is because i'm just it's just an effort to like figure out what pieces are missing and i'm scared that once i open this i'll figure out i can't make them and i really want to make these pants so that's that one um then i picked up a bunch of magazines along the way just online from friends like yeah so this is the sew magazine and it came with two patterns 
One was the Simplicity Amazing Fit K8543, which is this lovely, um, kind of loose fitting, but still fitted dress with these lovely sleeve variations. And it's part of the Amazing Fit collection, as I mentioned, which is meant to be aimed at getting a really nice fitting, fitted garment uh, as part of Simplicity. What I really like about magazine patterns is that the size range is much bigger. So it gives you sizes 10 through 18, rather than 14 to 18. And because I have that issue where I'm between pattern sizes most often, I love this because it means that I can play between sizes 12 and 16 and not have to have two different patterns. The other thing that came with was the Simplicity uh, K8473 from the Pattern Hacking Collection, um, which is basically this cape uh, that you can make in a bunch of different varieties. And I thought my grandma would really appreciate a cape like this, both of them, um, both grandmas I mean. So I think I'll make that closer to winter when more of the wools come into season and I can make a bunch for my family. Um, other than that, the Sewer Magazine doesn't, it has a lot of interesting stuff in it, but it doesn't really have anything else. It's got some like tips and tricks and that was cool. And like, I think you can download a couple of patterns. Like, I think this is a downloadable pattern, which is just like a basic wrap dress. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting magazine. I was thinking about getting a subscription to it, but it's just too expensive for me at the moment. So what I did as a secondary plan was I went onto eBay and just searched Berta Style Magazine and a bunch of other magazine names and found some Berta Style magazines from a couple older editions. So I've got the ninth edition of 2018, the third edition of 2015, the fifth edition of 2011 and the 11th edition of 2017. And the great thing about Berta Style Magazine is that in the middle, it's got all the patterns that you might wish to use from that book. So each of them have like a good, a good 10 to 15 patterns or even more, way, way more actually now that I'm looking at it. And they have a bunch of mixtures of children's, uh, children's patterns, dresses, blouses, tops, jackets, trousers, pants, like everything. So I thought it'd be really nice to start uh, kind of getting a bit more of a mixture of types of patterns, you know, like kids' clothes and stuff. If I ever wanted to make it, then this would be a good place to start. Um, and I've gotten a bunch of those. But anyway, enough rambling from me. That's all of the patterns that I got recently. Um, and my plans for that currently are the... Um, my plans at the moment, or the next things that I'm going to be working on, is this dress for a friend of mine and the dressing gown, the Butterick dressing gown, are currently on my table. I also still have him a pair of pants, my first pair of pants that you will have seen last week, the mock-ups for last week, sorry. But they're the things that are on my um, plans directly at the moment. I'll probably talk more about my plans, but to be honest, I don't really stick to a particular style. I just know all of these things I would like in my wardrobe at some point. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching this kind of different video. Hopefully it's not too boring. Um, for those of you who watch my videos that don't sew, thank you if you stuck around this long. Uh, and don't forget to like and subscribe and you'll hopefully see what my finished pants look like next week.